Hey guys, welcome back, and for those of you who are new, welcome. I'm Shayla at Virtually Nutritious. Today's video, we're going to be talking about nutrition during pregnancy. This was a video requested in the comment section on one of my videos. So if there's any type of video or content you'd like to see in the future, please feel free to comment it below. I'd love to hear what you guys want to see, and I'll make the video accordingly. So let's get right into it. So we'll start with something pretty basic, and that's weight gain. Weight gain during pregnancy really depends on your weight status before being pregnant. So if you weighed more before being pregnant, you're going to have to gain less. And if you weighed less, you're going to have to gain more. So I'll give you some number ranges now so that you can have some reference. So if you're underweight, that means having a body mass index or BMI under 18.5, you'll have to gain between 28 and 40 pounds during your entire pregnancy. If you're normal weight, so having a BMI between 18.5 and 25, you'll have to gain between 25 and 35 pounds during your entire pregnancy. If you're overweight, which means having a BMI of 25 to 30, you should be gaining between 15 and 25 pounds and if you are obese before becoming pregnant, that means having a BMI greater than 30, it means you'll have to gain between 11 and 22 pounds during your pregnancy. Now, if you're pregnant with multiples, those numbers can be very different. Um, anything over twins is really a specialty, and that's a different dietitian that would be giving you that information. It's a very, very detailed practice, and so I'll just be giving you the number range for twins. It's a really big range. It's between 25 and 54 pounds, so you'll really have to talk with your doctor about that. But for the most part, all of those numbers are ranges depending on your weight status before. Now to gain that weight, that means your calorie intake is going to have to be a little bit different. I know we've all heard the saying, I'm, oh, I'm eating for two. Well, it's not really the case. You're eating for yourself and an infant. So during the first trimester, you actually don't need to increase your caloric intake at all because the processes that are happening and the growth that is happening so minimal. Of course, it's very important, cell differentiation and all of those really important processes, but the fact of the matter is that there's not a baby grown yet. So the increase in calories really comes during the second trimester, and even then it's fairly minimal. So during the second trimester, you wanna increase your calories by about 340 calories per day. Now over the course of a week, that's not even a pound that you're gaining, which is okay, which is what is recommended. And then during your last trimester, this is you know where you really start to see the belly growth and this is where the baby is gaining size. This is, you'll increase your calories by about 452. That's a very specific number, I know, that's just what research says. 452 calories per day in addition to what you were eating before during your third trimester. And that should put you into that weight gain category that we talked about earlier. So when it comes to the other things like the macro and micronutrients, uh, eating a well-balanced, healthy diet and taking your prenatal vitamins really should be enough to cover your bases and ensure that you're getting adequate amounts of vitamins, minerals, calories, and things like your fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. But we'll go into details now just to clarify some questions. Now obviously there's always that case of a deficiency or something along those lines, so it's definitely important to know through blood work you know, what vitamins or minerals or things like that that you might be deficient in so that you can supplement those so that you don't run into any problems later on down the road during your pregnancy or during childbirth or something of that nature. So in terms of macronutrients, we'll start by getting water out of the way. During your pregnancy, you should really be drinking nine to 12 cups, so eight ounce cups of water per day. You do have increased fluid needs during pregnancy, so it really is important to stay well hydrated. When it comes to macronutrients, things like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, carbohydrates you want to make up the majority of your diet. Between 50 and 60% of your total calories should be coming from carbohydrates. If you don't know what those are, things like bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, cereal, oatmeal, things of that nature. 
for protein that's kind of dependent on your body weight status. So you want about 1.1 grams per kilogram of your body weight in protein per day. To figure that out, you just divide your weight in pounds by 2.2, and that will give you your total kilograms that you weigh. Multiply that number by 1.1, and that's how many grams of protein you should be having daily. Now for reference, about one ounce of meat is about eight grams of protein. About an eight ounce glass of milk is about eight, ounce, eight grams of protein as well. So that's just a little bit of a guide for you. So as Americans, we tend to overeat protein. Our needs are not that high and our serving sizes of things like steak can be upwards of 12 ounce steaks, which is completely unnecessary. And then we have something called the fats, which I think we all love. That should make up about 35% of your total caloric intake. Of course, we want more of those to be from healthier fats sources, so the unsaturated fats versus the saturated fats, so things like olive oil, avocados, fish, nuts, things of that nature versus things like butter, ice cream, red meat, things like that. So now that we're done talking about the macronutrients, we'll talk about the micronutrients, things like vitamins and minerals. So of course, whenever you think of pregnancy, you probably think of folate, really important vitamin in the B complex vitamin group. Um, it's important for a variety of things, but it does help to prevent early on in pregnancy against neural tube defects. Typically in the first 21 days of pregnancy, typically when people don't even know that they're pregnant, that's when things like neural, neural tube defects can happen. So if you are of childbearing age, you really should be making sure that you're getting adequate sources of folate, whether you're planning on becoming pregnant or not, because surprises do happen, so it's better to be prepared. So by having inadequate folate in your diet during pregnancy, you're increasing your risk of prenatal rupture, stillbirth, having an underweight child, and preeclampsia, which is hypertension, high blood pressure during your pregnancy. Luckily, with folate, it is more bioavailable from food than supplements. So when it comes from your diet, your body absorbs it and utilizes it more appropriately than it does from a supplement. So that's why the amounts in a supplement are going to be higher because you're only absorbing a certain percentage of it. But some sources of folate are things like refined grains, white rice, white bread, a lot of cereals that are fortified will have folate added to them. My favorite cereal, Smart Start, definitely has a good source of folate. So in addition to folate, another one of the B-complex vitamins that's extremely important during pregnancy is choline. It's really important for fetal brain and intellectual development. So, hey, if you want a smarter child, have more choline. Not necessarily, but there's a lot of research still ongoing for choline, the amount we're supposed to have during pregnancy, and its true effects if it is inadequate in the diet. So right now the recommendation is 450 milligrams per day during pregnancy and like I said that number is still being researched but some good sources of choline are meat and eggs so people who follow a vegan lifestyle can often be deficient in choline so it is important to find supplementation or fortified sources of fortified food sources of choline so that you can ensure that you're not Going to be deficient in it. So vitamin A is also an extremely important vitamin for pregnancy, especially during the early stages of pregnancy. Vitamin A is imperative to have enough of in your diet, so making sure that you have a lot of those orange vegetables in your diet will ensure that you're likely adequate in your vitamin A intake. With that being said, beta carotene is the most desirable source of vitamin A, so things like your carrots and sweet potatoes, having enough of those in your diet, will definitely make sure that you have adequate vitamin A levels. So another vitamin, vitamin D is super important during pregnancy. Vitamin D's role in an adult as well as in a fetus or a child is to help to calcify the bones. It pulls the calcium in and strengthens the bone. So if you don't have enough vitamin D, then your bones, your teeth, the enamel is not going to harden the way it should. It's also really important just for fetal growth in general and the recommendation is five micrograms daily of vitamin D. So I just mentioned calcium. Calcium is also another super important mineral during pregnancy. It's really important for the skeletal development of the fetus. 
and for retaining the strength and integrity of the mother's bones, which is also important. I mean, during pregnancy, of course, we're focused on the baby and the baby's development, but it's also important to preserve your own body. So it is important to get good sources of calcium. The one great thing about pregnant, not the one, but one of the great things during pregnancy is that our body knows that we have increased needs. So actually the absorption of calcium is increased during pregnancy and we actually excrete a lot less than we typically would. So your body utilizes it a lot better. It's a lot more efficient with our calcium, which is really great. An inadequacy of calcium can also lead to high blood pressure in both the mother and the infant during pregnancy, which is not something that you want. So it is really important to get adequate source of calcium. So by having about three eight ounce glasses of milk or three servings of dairy daily, that should give you enough calcium and vitamin D to cover your bases. So that's the one benefit of dairy. For vegans, there's lots of fortified foods and a lot of leafy greens are good sources of calcium as well. So another mineral that's super important during pregnancy is iron. Naturally, females typically have higher rates of iron deficiency, things like iron deficiency anemia, but you're gonna need an additional 1,000 milligrams or one gram during your pregnancy. That doesn't mean per day, but that means over the course of your pregnancy, they have very specific roles during it. And if you are inadequate in your iron intake, it can increase your risk of something called pica or pica. I've heard it pronounced as well. That just means you're craving to eat non-food items. So if you're having a craving to chew on ice, which is probably one of the most, which is probably one of the least dangerous food cravings that there is associated with pica or pica, it might be because you're iron deficient. Um, a lot of people actually crave eating things like clay, dirt, baking soda, baking powder, laundry starch, things like that. So it can be really dangerous. So definitely making sure that you're not iron deficient is super important. Things like red meat, beans, lots of the leafy greens, having it with a source of vitamin C will actually improve your absorption of it. So that's just another tip. Iodine is another super important nutrient to make sure you're getting adequate amounts of because inadequacy of that can increase the risk of hypothyroidism in the baby. So obviously, you know, salt, it's iodized salt. Iodizing the salt was a mandate that was done years and years ago to decrease the risk of developing, developing inadequacies of iodine. Shellfish, seaweed, and some different types of teas also have some good sources of iodine as well. So that concludes the micro and macronutrient portion of the nutrition recommendations. But what's next is so important, and that's food safety. Being safe with your food is super important because you don't wanna be exposed to any foodborne illnesses or pathogens. You don't want food poisoning, anything like that, because that could be really detrimental as well. So it is important to stay away from any raw or smoked fish or meat. You want your meat to be cooked well. You want to make sure it's getting to the appropriate temperature on the inside. You don't want it to be undercooked at all. You want to make sure that your milk and your dairy products are pasteurized because that does kill the bad bacteria that could be in there. When it comes to things like deli meat, really processed meats like hot dogs, you want to make sure that they're heated up really thoroughly to their appropriate temperatures as well to ensure that you're not exposing yourself to the bacteria associated with it. Also be cautious of anything on like a salad bar or anything of that nature with mayonnaise. Um, you don't know how long it's been sitting out. You don't know if it's been time temperature controlled. So that's super important as well. So to be safe, make sure that you're cooking things to appropriate temperatures. You're being very safe with holding them at appropriate either cold or hot temperatures as well. Making sure things are covered. You're not cross contaminating anything. You're washing your fruits and vegetables, things of that nature. And I told you earlier we, uh, some, when I was talking about seafood and fish that we would talk about some recommendations later. Obviously, you want to be cautious of mercury content. So any of the bottom feeders, really long living fish can have higher levels of mercury just because of the food chain. Um, the longer you're around, the more fish you can eat. And the more fish you eat, the more mercury you're ingesting. So it is important to be wary of mercury content. You don't want a lot of that because that can also have some negative implications during pregnancy. 
So that concludes today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up below and hit subscribe. By hitting subscribe, you'll just get notified whenever I post a new video. I always post on Tuesdays and I post one other day during the week as well. And thank you so much for watching.